Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, uh, Vinu here, and I'm joined by the Pink Preacher. Awesome, man. So, hey, it's great seeing you here. <laughs> and you look incredible. I mean, you look awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah. Dude, I love your hair. I mean, hey. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think that's the next level. I got to take it to the next level. Uh, pink no. hair, a little hair. Yeah, you know, yeah. There you go. Pink this gray and make it pink. I like it. <laughs> man, I got to change my wardrobe now. Oh, man. Come, <laughs> come on. No, no, I don't know about that. Be, you know, <laughs> be ready for some rejection and humiliation. If you can take that, here you go, brother. Wear the coat. Man. I hear you, man. Dude, I actually love... For, I have a lot of jackets that's got fur on it, so don't even think that I'm too far from this already. Gotcha, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah, what is your story, man? What, what, what's your story? A couple, um, well, basically, um, three months ago, I was in bed around 11 o'clock at night sleeping. I'm a great sleeper, and God woke me up and says, uh, he had me go to my phone, and on my phone was a photo of a billboard that uh, said, read this, and it made me laugh. It said, don't go to church, it's all fake news, and it made me laugh. But on the billboard, it said, like, sponsored by atheist, national atheist uh, organization. I love that. How did you respond? Oh, no, I thought the, I thought the billboard was funny as heck, man. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was cool as heck. But what happened is God pushed me in that night. Now, again, it's around 11, 15. And um, then, I, then I saw that in Oklahoma, I followed the links in the article, and they said that in, in, in March they're having an um, atheist convention. Right, yeah. Well, I was an atheist for 20 years, and it's a, a, another story. Um, and I've been a, a believer for now 12 years. Well, God says, I want you to go to that convention. I'm yeah. like, what? I said, they're going to beat down the pink preacher. I'm like, <laughs> so in the morning, I wake up and I tell my wife, hey, man, God led me. He's called me to go to this atheist convention. Um, and she's like, okay. And she's she's here with me. She And I have uh, a good friend. Where are we at now? Where's that? Where, where, what is this? This is, we're at the National Atheist Convention. And the reason, the reason I wear the crazy outfit, I do something called uh, nightclub organization or nightclub outreach. Three and a half years ago, again, God, stop waking me up at, not at, at 11 o'clock. Three and a half years ago, I was sleeping. God woke me up and says, go a minister. I said, where God, 7-Eleven? Because what's open? He goes, you're going to go to the nightclubs. Now watch this, guys. I've been married 10 years. I go in, I said, hey, honey, I'm going to go to the nightclubs because God wants me to. You know what she says? She says, okay, I'll pray for you. Oh, what? What an excuse to get out of the nightclub. So since that, since the last three and a half years, I've prayed over 1,400 people in nightclubs. I don't try to proselyze them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, today I've already prayed over probably over a dozen atheists here. Um, and I just, a short blessing in their lives. And that's it. I'm, that's it. How do you feel, how do you find that you're received at an atheist convention as the pink preacher? You know what? That's a great question. Um, because I take a lot of judgment even when I go to churches. Like, yeah, yeah. a lot of times I don't wear the, the hat or the, the coat, but even the suit, yeah. um, I'll, I'll take a lot of judgment. And that's yeah, yeah. not what we should be doing. And a lot of people, I believe, um, here have been driven away from God, not by God himself, but yeah. by the judgmental people, which we shouldn't be. Yeah. So here, it's been okay. Yeah, it's yeah. been way better. I really thought I was going to take a beat down. I'm like, dude, <laughs> if they beat me down, the blood is just going to show up on this paint mat. I'm like, yeah. zoom in, look at the blood. So they've been, you know what? They've been really, uh, really receptive. People have been open to hear. I've been listening to their stories. I've been listening to mine. So it's been cool. It's been great. Nice, great. Well, tell me more about uh, how the church maybe reacts with you. You are the pink preacher. I was so. just, I was, I was kicked out of a church, a mega church. Yeah. What? So why? I can't get into the story. There's a lot. Again, I'm called, I, right now, I just want to apologize to people, atheists. I want to apologize on behalf of Christians right now, openly. The Pink Preacher is because there's so many people the, that say they're Christians and they're judging people, they are they're, um, um, have hatred, they have uh, unforgiveness. Even when I was an atheist, for 20 years, I didn't live a life of unforgiveness or judgmental. So I apologize to the Christians. Something new is coming, and it's going to be awesome, and it's not going to be... So I, I am a Christian, and but I'm apologizing on behalf of all the people who say they are, and they act like the devil on Monday. I got you, man. So am, am, am I hearing that you are recently converted to Christianity? 12, no, 12 years ago. 12, 12, year, 12, 12 years, years ago. 12, 12 years, years ago, ago, you converted yep. to Christianity. Yep. It happens with yep. the billboard on your phone. You know, no, just, that, the, no, the billboard happened three months ago. Three months ago, yep. and that was about this. About this. Gotcha. And before you were a Christian, what was your life like? Dude, I had the most 
amazing, perfect atheist life. And if anyone can beat my life, I'll pay them $1,000. So if you had a better atheist life than me, you contact him and we, we will compare bedpans like, you know, through maybe a VoIP or a Skype and $1,000. It's called the $1,000 Atheist Challenge. So my life, I was living the perfect atheist life. No fear, no judgment. Um, I lived on a Caribbean island. I was making tons of money. I had freedom, no responsibility. I haven't, I've never drank, I, no, sorry, never had a beer to this date. And so I had the perfect, never cried in 20 years, never suffered one day of depression, and I didn't live a life of fear. I just was talking to an atheist at lunchtime today, not about God, but this. I asked him what his dream was. He's like, oh, you know, I want to, I want to colonize space. I said, well, go for it. No, no, no. I have to live, I have to live, I have to live like this. I'm too afraid. I said, so any atheists out there, just don't live. I didn't live a life of fear as an atheist. And I encourage if any atheist out there, live a life of no fear. I, I can appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. So what was it that led to your conversion? You had this yes. role model atheist lifestyle, oh. something that any human would want. Yeah, any, yeah. And then you became a Christian. Right. Real, real quick, real yeah, quick. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try to quick. A girl came into my life, and uh, um, um, and she never. She she was a Christian for 20 years. Um, her mom was dead for seven days. Now this is my wife. This is her mom. This is not in a book. Uh, three Christians prayed over, her and she came back to life after seven days. This is my mom. You know, some of you might think, oh, that's BS. Okay, is my my wife lying to me and her mom? That's fine if you want to believe that. But this this is not out of book. She gets sent to America. She meets me. I tell her three things on, on a date that should have drove her away, like far away. Her, her friends actually said after she, you've met the devil himself. She never once brought up God to me in a year. I tracked her prayers secretly in Microsoft Excel. After watching for a year of them coming true, I said, hey, can I come to your church? She's like, no, I'm not taking you to my church because I was so bold that I said, I would walk into church. She said, you all are weak. You need a crutch. I don't need that. So that's, that, that's how where I stood. Yeah. So anyways, I went to church on the fourth time a person came up to me. It was a, a pastor. They started talking to me. Another pastor pushed him out of the way and says, God wants me to talk to you. Now I'm standing here. I'm a 20 year <laughs> veterinary and atheist. Okay. And, and the pastor says, can I lay hands on you? I wanted to say no big time. God is always talking to you guys. He's always, we just shut our hearts down from listening. So I said, and, and there was hundreds of people around. I said, okay, go ahead. The pastor grabbed my head like this. Boom. Tears started going from here to my, my, my toes. I started to shake. I didn't ask for those shakes. I shook for seven hours. I was totally an atheist non-believer. How the fudge is my body shaking for seven hours? Yeah. That's, so God literally rocked my body to the core to make him to say, God is alive. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, you have an amazing story. You have a very compelling Thank story. You. Any last words, Pink Preacher? My thing is, is this. Atheist, Christian, if you're living a happy life, non-judgmental, love, do what you're going to keep doing. But the biggest thing is this. Inside is a dream. All I ask anyone watching, atheist, Christian, whatever, is do not be afraid to go for your dreams. The reason the world is whacked, where we have all this, all this problems, is because we're not following our dreams. And today, talking to that one guy, fear is attacking the Christian or the atheist community too. So just stop fearing and go for your dreams. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on this interview. Thank you. That was great, man. I appreciate that. Holy fudge.